This is LBC. And a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Pete Murray Show in this first hour. It's Pet Line. Do you know my dog, Peppy? So yes. do you think I ought to get a coat for him? I think if he looks as though he's shivering or showing signs of the cold, it's something to consider yes. as they get older. And it's the same with our geriatrics. Yes, I know. Well, don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, thank you for your call, and I sincerely hope something... The magic of Luxembourg was that it was illegal. And uh, people thought they'd been very naughty. A number of people I've heard. I mean, Tony Blackburn used to listen to me at school. Horrific thought. Uh, I even supposedly inspired him into his uh, broadcasting career, which again is a pretty horrific thought. Um, but um, uh, yes, he used to listen to me at school under the bedclothes. That's another horrific thought. <laughs> my real love of Herr Lutzenberg began when my father, who was working part of the time in the Far East, came back from Japan in 1961. It was the week that surrender was top of the charts, I remember. And he, he, he brought back two little transistor radios, my brother and me. And these were perfect for listening to under the bedclothes, because radios, of course, were banned. And everybody else, including us, had been smuggling in these enormous radios into the dorm, which were always being nabbed. But these little radios were terrific, and you had a little earphone. And it picked up Luxembourg extraordinarily well. And it was just terrific hearing all these pop records that you didn't really hear on the BBC. And if you were at boarding school, it was even harder to hear them because when the BBC did play them, you were usually in chapel or playing football or something. So Luxembourg was an absolute lifeline, educated me in the wonderful world of pop. So I had a deal. I struck with prefects in boarding schools that for the period of the teen and 20 disc club, there was an amnesty where you could listen to the programme providing you had your tranny under the bedclothes and didn't disturb anybody else. So I then formed what I call the under the bedclothes club. And my mother, God rest her soul, the Duchess, was mortified one time when an exceptionally dolly young lady rushed up to her and said, oh, Mrs. Savile, I'm in bed with Jimmy every Wednesday night, you know. And the Duchess went, what's this? was lead singer of Man for Man, the original lead singer, Paul Jones, I've been a bad, bad boy. It's just come around to five to midnight, my last five minutes on 2.08. Uh, I'm have... looking forward very much to seeing Stuart Henry, one of my heroes with his wife, Ollie, who's very much a heroine. He's, uh, he's not getting out very much anymore. Of course, uh, as I'm sure everybody is aware, Stuart's got multiple sclerosis and um, has, uh, you know, a very bad situation in terms of immobility. So I hope we'll somehow get him into the radio station. That would be a very big highlight for me if that happened. He lost his job at Radio 1. So we got, gave him a job here at Luxembourg. Very happy to have him because he was like a household name. We have some old names like Chris Denning on the air. Uh, Mid-60s, Chris, yeah? With Luxembourg? Right, right, OK, who do we have? Tony Prince. Less of the old names. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, a uh, middle-aged name, shall we say, in his case. <laughs> So terrible for you. Give us as quickly as we can, everybody, please, because we've got something going on here that I really wouldn't like to get interrupted. So, as quickly as you can. Hello there, is this uh, Andy Raymond? Jeff Lennon, Good to see you. Hi, Tony, how are you? I didn't come to see you. So, we're marking the end of uh, 208 14 40, but we're looking ahead to the future on the Astra satellite. In stereo. When people began calling me in the long, long ago now, the first disc jockey on Luxembourg, I didn't know what they were talking about to begin with. And then when I heard a disc jockey or two, I realised that the, what they did usually was to link two sides of a gramophone record or two different records with a whole lot of inconsequential chat, which might be quite amusing, but didn't mean anything. International program from London. Well, I, I don't think Radio Luxembourg would have got anywhere had it not been for the BBC's policy, really. BBC scored a marvellous own goal by allowing Radio Luxembourg into the British broadcasting field. And it did that because of its Sunday programme policy, which had been Reith's uh, policy right from the beginning. Heavens declare the glory of God and the firm of In 1927, Lord Reith became 
uh, the Director General of the new British Broadcasting Corporation. He was, of course, the son of a very austere Presbyterian minister, and this was reflected in the programme policy of the BBC. That is a policy of treating Sunday as a different day from all the others. <coughs> and that on that day, uh, one should devote oneself primarily to religious feelings and not to frivolous entertainment, considered by some people as sinful, you know, and couldn't be allowed. So, what did they do? They tuned to Luxembourg. Well, wouldn't you? I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Day, I simply say tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Well, I was the first Briton ever to announce this is Radio Luxembourg. Sunday, the 3rd of December, 1933. Quite a while ago. <laughs> You were the son of a, a clergyman. I was indeed. Did you not feel any guilt about this? No, 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 no. I felt no guilt at all. And nor did my father, he didn't mind. He thought it was rather funny too. When I was very young, I listened to it early Sunday morning. But that was because my family liked to hear it and it was on all the time. And one thing they didn't want to do was go over to the BBC for what they used to say, all those church service and piss pot music. They meant chamber music. The makers of vile beans present Rhyme With Reason. We send greetings, good wishes, and a little music to cheer you on your way. Good. One of the main problems with Luxembourg was the fading. Because no commercial station was be allowed to be set up anywhere near England, uh, it had to be in the Duchy of Luxembourg. A hell of a distance. Germany calling. Germany calling. Germany calling. Here are the right center and boy. Station Raymond and Station. The British Ministry of Misinformation has been conducting a systematic campaign of frightening British women and girls about the danger of being injured by splinters from German bombs. Lord Hall, William Joyce, he was a local man, lived over in Dulwich Village. He sympathized with Germans. And he wanted to get into broadcasting. He probably couldn't do it over here. So he tried with Germans and they were very pleased to accept him as a broadcaster. And he broadcast from the old Luxembourg transmitter, which the Germans had take over, took over when they overrun the Duchy of Luxembourg. He wasn't worried about the rest of Europe because Germany had very carefully destroyed all the wireless sets belonging to the countries that overrun. It was their principle to kill their radio sets. If you caught this into radio, you could be shot. Indeed, Mr. Churchill, with quite unusual frankness, admitted that the military results of the Belgian capitulation would be very grave. When this spiteful old creature, blind with prejudice... Uh, and eventually, we captured to use such William Joyce. The end cannot be we brought back to his country and finally hung at Wandsworth, not more than five miles from where he spent most of his life and there were a few shots at trying to get him off, uh, reprise and uh, appeals, but he was very, very guilty. He was a traitor, if ever there was one. Es lieber Deutschland, and farewell. So somebody met me in Selfridges one day and said, Good God, I thought you were dead. I'd like to introduce myself to you. I'm Stephen Williams' wife. Are you really? Now yes. then, how Much about that? Much younger than he is. There you go. Because <laughs> we had opportunity knocks was there for very yes, many yes, seven years. Course, yes. And out of it on Luxembourg came the late David Whitfield, who was a great yeah, star yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, The Bachelors.